Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today and welcome to my review for Tales of Arise. This is a big one, right? One of my most anticipated games of 2021, but for those of you in the Xbox ecosystem, this is the first Tales game to drop on an Xbox console since Tales of Vesperia when it came out in 2008. So this is a big JRPG and expectations are a bit higher due to it seemingly having a budget. As a longtime Tales of fan and one who was sort of let down by the efforts of recent ones, I was really looking forward to this. Now do check your reviewers on this. Bandai did send out review codes, but they gave us the ultimate edition, which gave us huge bonuses on DLC, the amount of money earned, SP, all of that stuff if you were to have activated it. So I personally tried out over half of the game with it not active and then I wanted to see how much of a difference it did make afterwards by activating it. I don't know how many reviewers immediately activated it. So unless you bought the ultimate edition, you may have a pretty different experience. So check your reviewers on that one. I want to be transparent of my process with that. And for those who are interested in this game, it is releasing September 10th for $60 on the PlayStation 4 and 5. PC, Xbox One, and the Xbox Series consoles. Now, let's get into what I imagine will be a lengthy review, starting off with the story, which was pretty dang good. You play as Alfin, a half-masked man who's been enslaved alongside many others with a mysterious past. He can't feel pain, he can't even remember anything about himself, and he's a real stoic individual. Alongside him is Shion. She's on a mission to take down all the lords in the land. Her personality consists of doing very nice things for others, but pretending to be detached. While having a large appetite? Yes. That may sound very JRPG cookie cutter to you, and it's because it certainly is. And when I saw this, I went, oh boy, oh, here we go. They are JRPG, the characters, but the best character of them all, which creates separation with each of these individual personalities that are in your party because of their worldviews, is the planet itself. You're set on a planet conquered by a race of elite humans who are technologically advanced known as Raynans. They won a war 300 years ago and since then have enslaved the locals to this planet known as Damnons. Now the planet has been split into five regions all held down by lords who are participating in what is called a crown contest. Each of the lords holds a master core, which beyond freeing the regions of this suppressed society is what your party is truly after. So it's a story of both rebellion and freedom. When do people stop fighting? Does societal power truly matter? But also what is the truth behind why the world is this way. And each of these regions holds a shocking truth. They are environmentally diverse. They hold their own host of interesting characters that are, by the way, consistent throughout the entire story, which is really important to build them up. And ultimately, what it leads to is Tales of Eyes being a much darker RPG, especially in comparison to the rest of the series and more recent entries. Like, Berseria was pretty dark in its second half. Whereas something like Zestiria was like, hey friend, let's go on an adventure, and so on and so forth. So Tails has been known to really punch hard in the early going and then loosen up. This game stayed pretty gritty and pretty serious, and I appreciated it more for that. But here's the thing, is that what I'm going to start marking down from this point forward are things that would matter for Tales of fans, like myself, and things that probably won't matter to newcoming fans. But the good news here is with Tales of Arise, like all Tales games that are usually not connected outside of Zestiria and Berseria, is that you can just hop into this for the first time ever if this is your first Tales of game and it's never been a better time to do so. Beyond that, you're gonna explore a plethora of zones which stitch together a history that's worth getting invested in. Mixing in powerful voice acting, many more cutscenes, and everything punches a bit harder in this story. While the main story hits pretty well, the subquests are literally there just to give you rewards. They'll give you some money, some SP, we'll talk about that in a little bit, some new items, new recipes, that is really it. You will never be delivered a compelling story here in the subquest. So do know that the additional content here is just to get you to fight X amount of more enemies, to cook this item, to collect five of this. They're really not super compelling, but because the combat's so fun, I didn't find myself caring deeply about them. And because the rewards you got were so great, I also didn't care, but you're not gonna get anything that's phenomenal in the storytelling department beyond what you're getting in the main story. On the other end of storytelling, which is really important for character building in Tales of, is skits. So for those unfamiliar, skits are typically told like this, with anime cutouts as the characters talk about all random things in their adventures, from cooking a new meal, to the amount of money they have, to more important story-related events. And it's what helps the in-between those big story moments 
build up these characters into true personalities. But as you can see in Tales of Arise, things are different. They're handled in a more comic book cutout fashion. This is what I meant by certain Tales of fans will look at this and go, wow, they've invested more here. Whereas those who are newcomers, this actually looks particularly low budget where it doesn't develop much of a personality as a style of storytelling. I actually prefer the anime style of the skits compared to what we're seeing here because you'd see creative usage of the box they were in, like bumping each other and the facial animations. There was something that was much more hilarious about it where this looks like a very low budget cutscene. So if you're new to the series, this will not really impress you. And if you're like me, I think it'll be hit or miss. Some people will go, well, this is an improvement while you have other folks who are going to be more purists, maybe like myself, and say, like, eh, not really feeling it. Is it bad? Is it a detraction? No, because a lot of the conversations and character building within them is great. And it still does face that problem that Tales of has, although it's not nearly as bad as something like Berseria, where Berseria will dump, like, eight skits in your lap and say, like, hey, enjoy. And you'll sit there and flip through literally back to back to back to back, like, eight different conversations. For this game, the most I saw was about three. And that's not too bad because they're typically 30 seconds to a minute and a half, nothing way too long. But what's important to note here is that the story was allowed to take its time and party members weren't forced in at awkward moments. And that allowed for a buildup gradually, which I believe led to a sound execution and when to deliver powerful moments in the story. And the reason they were able to do that is because of combat. So let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. So it's pretty simple action combat up front for those of you just looking from the outside but for those who are longtime fans this is facing arguably the biggest upgrade we've seen in the tales of combat system yet so you're going to press the attack button with the right bumper you're going to evade with the right trigger and you're going to perform arts which are abilities in the tales of series using face buttons now arts are determined by ag which are these blue little diamonds beneath your character they'll automatically restore in combat and later on in the game you're going to unlock skills that can enable restoration in a quicker manner such as perfect dodges perfect guards so on and so forth now you can spam these arts if you'd like such as in previous tales of games but the penetration system leads to diminishing returns if you are to continuously spam the reason for that is because you want to string together the most neat combos you can to place your enemy in a break state upon breaking them you can slowly fill a blue bar which will allow for a boost attack eventually and these are sick they are the definitive loop in the combat system right you'd think to yourself it could get boring after 30 plus hours of jump into combat combo 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 break combo 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 and then a boost attack but because they're sick and there's so many and they do a lot of damage i continuously got a dopamine rush every time they happen and especially because the voice acting so intense in this game in japanese by the way play the game in japanese we'll talk about that later but this elevated things for me and it made the loop continuously engaging and i think if they didn't have this it would have suffered without it it is a very significant addition that i want to see in more entries in this franchise beyond that there's the as expected mystic arts which are going to do exactly what mystic arts do devastating damage across the battlefield also in combat you can switch between party members which is more useful than ever in this game because each party member truly feels diverse and has their own kit and you don't have to go into menus to switch out with them like in prior entries in the series you can just hold down one of the bumpers use the d-pad and swap to one of your party members now as you get deeper into the game you'll unlock battle chains and this is stringing together a number of battles for better rewards better money drops so on and so forth to keep you fighting and fighting and fighting and once again it's because the combat is good at the center of all this that they can do this they can add something like battle chains they can pace out their story better because they know in between you should most likely be entertained and it's so significant i cannot emphasize it enough after completing combat you're gonna head to the skill panel where you can spend sp on new upgrades now every character has their own allocated sp so alfin's sp will be different from shion's and so on and so forth this is important to note because even if they're out of combat they're still gonna level up they're still gonna get sp i know a lot of jrpgs make this mistake of they're not in your party they're getting jack shit and i'm like what are you doing man why but 
they actually do keep it this way. They all continuously build SP and you can spend it how you want. As you spend SP and you fill out some of these panels, you will earn stat bonuses beyond them. So if you fill out one of them, it'll give you 10 plus attack or plus 10 to elemental defense, so on and so forth. Also, enemies are gonna drop items that you can take back to a blacksmith for new weapons and emblems. By the way, the weapons have unique models. I know this shouldn't be significant, but in a JRPG like this, it is very significant to see your equipment changing as you put different things on. Your armor will not change. I know we'd be asking for a lot if that were to happen, but seeing the weapons change was really nice that they weren't just stat boosts. So that made me very happy, but there is a pretty simple blacksmith system in here. You'll just take these items to him. He'll craft them. As you get more refined and better items later in the game, you'll reuse old weapons combined with higher level materials to make even stronger versions of older weapons. The emblems themselves can be upgraded by pumping resources into them, but it's nothing crazy or mind bending. And I think its simplicity works very well with everything else surrounding it being a little bit more complex. Also one noteworthy feature that I think will go skimmed over pretty often is that combat, it transitions really quickly. So you're not fading in, everyone's in a ready stance, like, okay, let's do this, man, let's fight, JRPG combat. It actually just fades in, fight starts, and when it's done, there's no results screen where everyone's like, yeah, level up, like dancing around. It just fades out. You see a little results screen on the left side. It tells you what you got from money to XP to how much time you spent, all the SP you got, and it goes away, and that's it. Like, it's just keeping you moving, and it's all about flow and pacing in this game where I do love results menus in JRPGs and RPGs in general. I think there's something kind of celebratory about winning, but it can start to lose steam over time. If it's constantly reminding you like you won, you won. And it plays like this big guitar riff after you beat like two creatures. I get it, right? So I think they made a good choice here. It was something that I didn't expect, but I wanted to really personally call out because it again, continues to keep that flow up. Now you'll be traveling throughout larger world areas and more familiar linear ones. And this game is beautiful, absolutely gorgeous the color, the environmental diversity, it's all there. I do wish there were some more larger areas in the game to explore. I found myself wanting more of that to visit these unmarked locations and expand it in that way. I hope in future entries they do that, but this is another significant step forward that for longtime fans will be huge, but for new ones, I don't know if this will blow you away because there is a lot of consistent linearity. It's like, go down this path, you can jump around a little bit. You can find some treasure, but there's no like Bethesda Game Studios level going off the beaten path and finding out what's over there. It's not like that. But part of me thinks that's good because it manages to feel like a Tales of game just with a larger budget and much more focus. Now, as you're exploring, you're gonna be spending CP on things like field skills, which will allow you to unlock hidden areas. You'll be able to heal your team with this, which is really a defining feature. And you can restore it when you're resting. And when you're resting at this campfire, you can also cook with a variety of recipes. You can talk with different members of your party, catch up with them and develop your relationship a little bit more. Now this CP system, I overall found myself split on because I think it works well for what it needs to do, which is to create tension on when healing will be done outside of traditional items like a peach gel to restore your health. But I also found it kind of unfortunate because a lot of the healing went to other party members who would then handle it. And you could strategize to say like, hey, if we're below 20%, start casting this spell. So you could really have the NPCs do things when you wanted in very particular scenarios. But oftentimes I'd find that the CP would, in especially boss fights, and we'll talk about those in a sec, get spammed out and you'd really be hung out to dry and you'd spend all your items and what happened is you never had that moment of being rich in the JRPG, which is really common. So I thought there was a good balance there, but it did feel at times a little cheap. The reason for that is some of the bosses felt very spongy. So the first half of every boss fight is you're learning all of its mechanics. And unlike any other Tales of game, I was actually studying patterns, dodge rolling, not always spamming away, but backing up and seeing when a good time to attack was, targeting weak points where you can get a core break to knock them down. So the first half is always really good because it's all about the mastery of the system. Then in the second half, it sort of goes cheapo mode and they turn blue and they start ravaging the field and they start doing immense damage. You can't really stagger them and they become way more difficult to kill. 
And I thought this is where I started to have some issues with the CP system because every boss fight I'd be at zero. I'd spend all my items and oftentimes I'd find myself just squeaking by and it felt like a little bit of artificial intensity because the boss fights on their own mechanically were already tough on a normal difficulty, right? So my thought process is that is fine enough, but then it feels like this added mechanic of them going berserk had led to it feeling a little bit more cheap. Now, I didn't die much in this game and ultimately I would end up winning these fights, but it still became edging on the level of frustration when I encountered a boss. And that sucks because the boss design in this game from the patterns to the mechanics to each of them feeling different was immensely helpful in keeping the combat fresh. But it's just that once you get that at second half, it's that, okay, take a deep breath. Here we go. This might be a little bit longer than I expected. But real big shout out to the team for putting a lot of effort and time into boss fights, something that gets forgotten quite often in video games. This received a lot of focus, especially in action games where it feels like boss fights are sort of an afterthought nowadays and it's about the story. I really like that they had a lot of punctual main boss fights that were quite enjoyable. Just there's that one bit of sponginess which can start to run you dry. And it's why I mentioned at the top of the video, check your reviewers for DLC items because I didn't pop any DLC items for about 25 hours. And I was like, well, for my review, I should at least see what it's like with them. And they give you a lot of money, a lot of healing items, a lot of materials, and they can buff you up. And I did notice there was a little bit of a change there. Things were a little bit easier when I suddenly had a stacked amount of items. Everyone got a thousand SP, like it was insane. Also an important note here, dungeons have been improved. This is something that really, really deserves to be called out because wow, in Berseria and Zestiria and, and, and Vesperia and Tales of Hearts are, I mean, my God, some of these dungeons were horrendous. You had no idea where you're going. It was just the same walls everywhere. They were boring, cookie cutter. They have improved. There's verticality. There's visual variety. You can tell rooms from rooms. There's fun little secrets in them. There's lots of loots, bonus locations to explore. They are such an improvement. It made me thrilled. And that's not even from a returning fan perspective. They are good JRPG dungeons. Are they on the level of, I don't know, Persona 5? No. Pretty hard to reach that one because of that mixture of, of course, puzzles and storytelling and thematic emphasis. I mean, there's so much there that makes it really hard to top. But in the world of JRPG dungeons, like you look at Final Fantasy 15, something like that, which had, I thought, terrible dungeons for a AAA game. This is a big step forward for the Tales of series. And it's very encouraging to see because it was a major sticking point for me. So that brings us with all of the gameplay out of the way to sound. Ladies and gentlemen, I only have one thing to say about the sound. There's no disrespect to the English cast who did a solid job. Play it in Japanese. Everything gets elevated. Everything's a lot more intense. I feel like the moments that were much more heart pounding, much more sad, hit harder with this Japanese talent. And I played for about four or five hours in my hotel on English and I was just not feeling it. And granted, that may have been a product of switching back and forth. But I did play through one pretty emotional segment with the English voices. I was like, this ain't it. This ain't it. Not bad if English is your preferred way to play some JRPGs. I get it. I respect it. I often try to do that with the cast being good. But to me, there was a lot of familiarity in the voices that I was experiencing here in Tales of that have been in prior entries where I was like, this is already feeling a bit repetitive. And they didn't sound as inspired in their roles. And so going into Japanese, it just felt like they hit a million times harder. So I will say once again, emphatically, play it in Japanese or at bare minimum, try it. Trust me, you'll see the difference if you do try it. And so with that, we go to the verdict. I mean, I think it's pretty clear, but uh, yeah, this is a buy. This game was really, really well done. It's a major improvement for the series. It's a great starting point for new JRPG fans because it manages to modernize a lot of dated parts of the game. I thought the story was really well told. The world itself is engaging because of its lore and how well thought out it is. The surprises with the characters and how they lean into the world with all their different perspectives helps diversify them. And I found myself really pleased with the combat improvements. So all in all, this is a sound effort. I'm happy that they managed to get this one right. I was a little bit worried after the delays. And not only that, it is beautiful. 
It is an improvement from top to bottom for the franchise, and it's a great starting point for new JRPG fans. So if you're interested in Tales of Arise, go out and buy it. If you're thinking about, you know, I'm not a big JRPG fan, I think, once again, I have to say, this is a good place for you to start and feel things out and see if you can get into a JRPG like this, because I think the world is really interesting. I think the pacing, the content, there's not a lot of retreading of old ground. They do a really good job. So it gets my seal of approval. And with that, I leave you with my thoughts. And now it's time for you to sound off. What do you think of Tales of Arise? Do you have any lingering questions that maybe I missed here in this video? Fire away, and I'll try to get back to you in the comments down below. And with that, we'll talk very soon. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.